Okay, welcome once again to today's class. This is Concur Before You Go. If you're someone that manages travel for yourself or other travelers in your department, you're in the right place. We're gonna cover everything you need to know before you go on your next business trip. My name is Kelsey Moon and presenting with me today is our travel and entertainment card specialist, Matt Oborn. We have our amazing moderator, Jeannie. Uh, Matt and I will be presenting the course materials as Jeannie keeps an eye on the chat for any questions or technical issues that may arise. Um, she'll also be dropping helpful links. So as we go through the course material, you'll find reference links and information in the chat. Thank you so much, Jeannie. Um, and behind the scenes, we have Chandra Bandrill who is driving the slide deck. So the four of us will be covering the technical stuff, the course material, questions, answers, all that sort of stuff. So we're happy to be with you this morning. This shouldn't be the first virtual-led instructor training you've had. We've been doing this for a while now. Um, we hope that the format is familiar to you so that you can just take in the information we're presenting today. Okay, when we went live with Concur on July 1st of last year, which seems like an eternity ago, we were really proud of what we had accomplished. It typically takes other universities about one to two years to do what we did in roughly eight months. When an organization as large as ours makes such a massive change, it's expected that the first year is spent ironing out all of the kinks. We're almost at that year mark now, and we're still ironing out those kinks. We as a campus have so much to be proud of, but we're very aware that we have a lot more work to do to get everything operating the way we intended it to. The plan was always to launch Concur as the best product possible based on the Oracle Financial Cloud timeline. And then we were going to spend a few months or years in some cases refining the system for our campus needs. In today's class, we're going to guide you through UC San Diego's instance of Concur and highlight the new travel processes. The course is going to run for about two hours. We're going to definitely give you breaks along the way, so don't worry. Um, and remember to keep yourself muted, put any questions into the chat addressed to everybody. We're going to be able to have a Q&A session at the end of the class. Uh, questions are going to be recorded, thanks to, to Jeannie, um, and we will make sure that everything is answered either in the class or afterwards when we send out the course materials. Okay, as soon as we learned about the change to our financial system, we knew that it would mean a huge, massive, sometimes stressful change to how we do business here on campus. We spent a considerable amount of time exploring all the options available on the market for a new travel and an expense system. We saw demos, we engaged in meetings, sessions, hands-on sessions, Q&As, uh, we talked to other universities throughout the country, and we landed on Concur as the best option for how we do business today on campus. Concur provides a single platform supporting all aspects of travel, expense, and travel and entertainment card management. Concur offers robust mobile functionality like we've never seen before, like itinerary management and handy receipt capabilities, new ways of reporting, and more updated user interfaces. We hope that travelers will feel more comfortable and confident using the travel and expense tool on their various devices like cell phones, laptops, tablets, etc. Concur is an intuitive solution for managing an end-to-end -end travel process. Automatic posting of university card transactions and data from key partners will save us all time and allow us all the ability to match the transactions to the proper trip expense report. Concur was developed back in 1993 to do one thing and do it well. That one thing is to manage travel and expense for businesses. Today, Concur is used by close to 39,000 clients, including the Department of Defense and many of our partner campuses throughout the country. So let's take a look at today's course objectives. We're gonna take our concur first steps and review the homepage, including some features that I bet you haven't noticed before. We'll also explore your profile and take a look at the roles of primary assistant, travel arranger, and delegate. We're gonna learn about TripIt Pro, which is the free app that comes with our instance of concur. It's my personal favorite thing about concur, and it's gonna make managing it, your travel itineraries a snap. Request is the new way to pre-authorize travel and manage travel and entertainment card actions. 
we're going to take some time to look at that module and the steps you need to take to submit a request. The travel and entertainment card is the future of TNA payments made simpler. It's the most powerful tool a traveler can use. And remember, Concur was designed to work with card products just like this one. Finally, we're going to review travel booking in Concur and understand the importance of using this powerful tool for your travel arrangements. By the end of the course, we hope that you're going to feel confident and comfortable using Concur's pre-travel features. Let's jump in and get started. All right, so employees such as ourselves log on with single sign-on and land here on the Concur homepage. We're looking at my actual homepage right now, and please remember that your own homepage might have slightly different options based on your role. That's one of the cool things about Concur. It knows what role you have, and it helps bring your specific tasks to the forefront. One of the biggest differences you might notice on your own homepage is you're probably going to have an alert section towards the top right above the company notes. Alerts are used by Concur to let you know of any handy opportunities that you might be missing out on. The last two alerts I had were to enroll in e-receipts and to download the TripIt app. Once I took those two actions that the alerts were advising me to do, the alerts disappeared. Speaking both as a traveler and a travel administrator, I would strongly encourage you to follow the advice the alerts are telling you, whether it be enroll in something like e-receipts or download an app. The alerts are there to bring to our attention something we might have missed out on and to highlight something that will make your Concur lives a lot easier. Let's take a look at what the Concur homepage can do for us. So I'm gonna click right on Explore Concur and it is going to take us on a little guided walkthrough of the homepage. So I clicked the, the button um, and it is doing this all by itself. This is what it does, it navigates for us. It gives us a little bit of information of what we're seeing on our homepages. It walks us through all of the features of our homepage, shows us about our available tasks. Once again, this is doing it all by itself. It talks about the request module which is your first step in any Concur adventure. It moves on to the travel module. Once you have your request, you'll move on to book your travel. Expense is covered in this afternoon's class, so not today. And the App Center, which is an important feature we're gonna go over later. App Center is one of the best things about Concur in my opinion. You can book travel straight from your homepage like we're seeing here. It's just showing us more about the, the read more options. This is where we put handy campus information and travel updates. Not just travel updates, procurement card updates, that sort of thing. Again, there's more travel and traveler information. That's by clicking the read more button. And then you're gonna go over to Concur's help session. That's built in help from Concur. The Walk Me extension is something we built here in-house in to help you with Concur on, for our business purposes. And there we go. There is our quick handy dandy guide through Concur. Once again, that is something you can do on your own. Um, that is launched from your own homepage on Concur and it just guides you through your Concur homepage and points out things you might not have noticed before. I think that's a pretty cool feature for those of us that don't use Concur every day or are maybe a little less familiar with it. Okay, so step one for any new user, even those of you who have been using Concur but have happened to uh, skip this step, is to complete your profile. Let's take a look at that. So in the last screen, the home screen, we saw a profile option. We're gonna click on the profile option and it jumps over to this page. We're looking at our profile settings now. The page is definitely text heavy, but don't let it overwhelm you. You don't have to read every single section. They just point to an area of your profile as a shortcut, like a table of contents in a book. If you click on the personal information option you see at the top left of the screen, you'll go right to your profile to update all of the other areas. Be sure to add all the required information, as well as some of the important additional info like loyalty program numbers and your travel and entertainment card. 
If you plan on making personal travel arrangements, feel free to add your own personal card data as well. Remember, the system is also used by the Department of Defense, so you can rest assured that your information is safe. And also, I want to add that um, it is given that we've had a big security breach across all of UC, um, Concur was not affected. So this system was not affected in that security breach. Card numbers and personal data are still maintained securely. All right, so you're going to notice an option for e-receipts. What's an e-receipt, you may ask? It's the electronic version of your receipt delivered straight from Concur's partner suppliers. It uploads seamlessly right into Concur for you. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to put a slip of paper in your purse or wallet and forget to dig it out later. You don't have to deal with a stack of receipts when you get back from your trip. It's already gonna be there and concur for you. Another key feature of the user profile is for any traveler to add arrangers if they plan on having anyone else book travel for them. It's easily done in the user's profile. We'll see that in action momentarily. So just hold on to that thought. We're gonna do a quick poll now and see if you've already completed your Concur profile. See if that poll is gonna come up for us. There it is. So you've already completed your, your Concur profile, yes. Uh, no, we had to do that or no, not yet, but now I will. <laughs> All right, good answers, everyone. Love it. Uh, couple people. Okay, so after this class, be sure to get your Concur profiles all updated. Perfect. Good results. Thank you. Okay, excellent. I'm seeing some comments in the chat that Zoom is kicking people out when we change slides. I'm not sure what to do with that, but I believe we've got uh, some behind the scenes. Jeannie or Chandra might be looking into that. That's very strange. Uh, Chandra's gonna, we, the team, will be sending out the recording of the session afterwards. So don't worry if you miss something, just hop back on, we'll get right back into it. And we're ready for the next slide. There we go. Okay. One of the most important features in Concur is the delegate functionality. As a delegate, uh, you will be able to act on behalf of someone else. So that person's work is being delegated to another employee. We're far enough along in our use of Concur that I suspect most of you are already familiar with the concept, but let's take a brief look together. Concur is so robust that it's easy to miss something that might come in handy to you. Okay, so we're gonna set up a delegate. I go to my profile, I wait a second, and there's an add delegate button that pops in for you. Click on that. The profile option screen pops up just for a second, and then I'm able to set up my delegates. I'm gonna search for Chandra. Concur already knows who is an employee and who's not. So I'm gonna add Chandra as a delegate. These options enable or disable Chandra from doing certain kinds of work on my behalf. And the receives emails button means that anything I'm notified through Concur, Chandra also gets copied on. So there we go, we've saved Chandra. She's now my delegate. I can see who I'm a delegate for. I'm a delegate for our here on consultant who helped us with Concur. You can see all my delegates here. And if I wanna remove Chandra, thanks for your help Chandra, don't need you anymore. I'm just going to remove her. I always need Chandra. She's like the best support possible. There we go, it's that easy. That's how you set up delegates and manage what a delegate can do on your behalf. For those of you who have faculty members or PIs to assist, they have to set you up as their delegate, and it's the first step they can do when they log into Concur. Uh, we know that getting a um, getting a faculty member or PI to go into Concur and take that action can be a little bit of a challenge, but once it's done, that's all they need to do. 
So encourage your, your faculty members and your PIs to get in there, create those delegates, and they won't have much to do from, from then on. There's still some things they need to do, but for the most part, that's the key step. Okay. The travel module in Concur acts a little bit differently than delegates, so let's take a look at the travel arranger feature. Travel arrangers are people who can book travel on behalf of another employee. It's pretty handy for those PIs and researchers who hand off their duty to their admin support staff. So we're gonna go back to where our profiles were. Click on the profile. We're going to go to the profile settings. And we're going to go ahead and find the travel section. There we go. Once again, I'm gonna add Chandra. There she is. Chandra is allowed to book travel for me. There she is. Chandra is ready to book my travel on my behalf. That means she can go into Concur as me and book travel for me using my own loyalty points if I want to, um, using my own preferences. She just does that action on my behalf. So an additional feature is the uh, primary travel assistant. So a travel, the primary person for a travel assistant is someone that receives information regardless of who does the booking. That's a new feature for us. It's a pretty cool one. So that means if there are a bunch of admin support staff in an office who are all booking travel for the same people, that primary assistant is the one that's going to get notified of all the bookings regardless of who made that booking. So expect a lot of emails, but also it's a great way to keep track of everybody to have one person in charge. Okay, so now we have our profiles, delegates, and travel arrangers all set up. So let's go on to the next step of maximizing your Concur experience, which is TripIt Pro. I'm also hearing that there are um, campus-wide issues. Um, thank you, Elizabeth, for letting us know. I would think that's probably why we're all getting kicked out. And I hope that um, it's resolved quickly so that we can just move along and have fewer interruptions for all of us. I'm really sorry about that. I wish there was something we can do to make that smoother. Okay. So the App Center, we touched on it very briefly uh, when we saw the tour of the Concur homepage and now it's time for the good stuff. Concur comes with a suite of mobile apps that all work together to maximize your Concur experience. The two we recommend the most are Concur for Mobile and TripIt Pro. Concur for Mobile is a business process tool that helps you track, report, and approve expenses on the go. That app is covered in this afternoon's class, the expense reporting class. This morning, we're gonna talk about TripIt Pro, which is, as I've said, my very favorite thing about using Concur. It's the world's leading itinerary management app. And if you check it out in the app store, you're gonna see that it has a rating of 4.8 stars out of almost 185,000 reviews. It's used across the world. Both of these apps are only available on Concur's App Center, which can be found on your Concur homepage. If you try to go straight to your device's app store or app center, you're not going to be connecting to the app that has our own instance of Concur. It's really important that you start off in the app center from your Concur homepage. We're going to take a quick look at that app center now. All right, so we're back on the homepage. Click on app center at the top of the screen. It takes us to Concur's related linked apps. You can see a whole slew of apps here. These aren't all of them. This is um, just a, what comes up on the first screen. There's many apps Concur is related to. Today, we're looking at the TripIt Pro app. Once you click on that tile, it's going to tell you a little, bit, a little bit about the app and teach you how to connect. It'll give handy screenshots of what the app can do. We're gonna look at those in just a second. Every app listed in Concur's App Center will have a format like this. It'll tell you what the app does and give you some screenshots so you know what to anticipate and see if it's something you wanna download. Again, these are optional. 
but we really strongly encourage making use of at least Concur for Mobile and TripIt Pro. Now that we know where to go, let's take a look at what it is. We're trying to get it. This is just a very quick video going over the TripIt Pro features. It seems to not want to play for us. There we go. Perfect. Jack is a frequent traveler. Very frequent. He can tell you the best and worst place to eat in any airport. He can tell you which hotels have free internet and which ones have bad plumbing. But he can't tell you every detail of his constantly changing travel plans. That's where TripIt comes in. He forwards his confirmation emails to TripIt and all of his travel plans are instantly organized in one place. It tells him where he needs to be and when. And if he wants to share his itinerary with anyone, TripIt makes it quick and easy. No Wi-Fi, no problem. He can still access his itinerary even when he's offline. So he has exactly what he needs when he gets to the airport. Because Jack is on the road all the time, he supercharges his travels with TripIt Pro. With real-time alerts along the way, TripIt Pro lets him stay one step ahead and guides him from the airport to the rental car to the hotel. So Jack can handle business without missing a beat. TripIt Pro also lets him know about delays or cancellations and can find alternate flights. It even notifies him if a better seat becomes available. He is a pretty tall guy. Now Jack can arrive stress-free in time for dinner and prepare for the next trip. Fantastic. Okay, so that was a quick overview of TripIt. That was that little video was taken right from Concur's App Center itself. Um, so we just sort of approached it. You can go look at it from your Concur App Center too, if you want to. Okay. As I said, I'm a really big fan of TripIt, and I can't speak highly enough about it. I use it both for business and personal trips. I've been using it long before we had our own version of Concur. It's just a public app you could get from your app center without having a Concur relationship. So any traveler anywhere, any, any situation can use it. However, we here have purchased, uh, because we've purchased Concur booking and expense, the TripIt Pro app comes to us for free. It's normally $49 a year. So good to know that we get it for no cost. Okay, so TripIt kicks into gear when you're still in the planning stages of your trip. Some of my favorite features are the check-in reminders and boarding pass delivery. You can store your boarding pass right on your phone with no printer needed. Uh, and one crucial aspect for some of our business travelers is the ability to create an inner circle of people who will receive notifications about their travel plans. If the plans change, all of your colleagues are going to know about it with no manual effort needed to get that information out. Super, super handy feature. I might be weird, but I really, really like to have a huge amount of padding to get to the airport. I'd rather get there two hours early than be just 10 minutes early. I'd rather get there early, settle in and relax before my flight. I know that not everyone is like me. Uh, so one of the perks of TripIt Pro is it tells you when to leave for the airport and gives security wait times. I'm sure we can all think of a time when knowing how long that security wait time at the airport is going to take so that you can leave your house on time with no stress. Super helpful stuff. I specifically remember a time that I myself was traveling back in 2019 and I was trying to make a connecting flight in Atlanta. I originally had about two hours between my flights, uh, but there was a delay on my first flight. So I had just mere minutes to make my connection, go from airplane to a different gate, and get onto a different plane. When, I, when my first plane landed, uh, I turned my cell phone back on and waiting for me was a trip at notification. And it was telling me my next flight's gate had changed and it showed me a map of the airport and how to get to that new gate. Super, super handy. Once again, it saved me a lot of time and stress that day. 
All of the benefits of TripIt Pro are free for all of our UC employee users. As I said, the Pro version is $49 a year and we get it for free. It works for business trips, personal trips, whatever you like. It is really, really handy. I hope I'm selling you on it because this is truly one of the best features about what we use Concur for today. Okay, so let's take a look at how to get TripIt onto your phone and into your life. <laughs> Once again, I'll emphasize that any Concur-related apps you plan on using need to be accessed via Concur's App Center. That's because the App Center has our company-specific information and technical qualifications that apply only to our campus users. Once you click on the TripIt tile in Concur's App Center, you'll get on-screen guidance on how to download and use the app. Setup takes just a few minutes up front, and then you'll be set for all of your trips moving forward. One of the benefits of TripIt Pro is the auto import feature. Normally, um, without auto import, you would have to forward all of your travel plans, your email confirmations, itineraries, that sort of thing, to a specific email, which is plans at tripit.com. The auto import feature scans the email addresses that you've authorized for any itinerary details, and it adds them to your TripIt account automatically. Travel plans will sync with Concur, and you can even indicate which plans are business and which are personal. So none of us really want our personal information showing up on our work websites. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do another quick poll. The question is, TripIt is something I can see myself using. Groovy, let's jet, you know that's my option. Uh, I don't like apps, but I'll tell my travelers about it or, oh no, another app on my phone. <laughs> Good answers, everyone, excellent. We completely respect that not everyone is an app person, absolutely. And we have so many distractions and apps on our phones anyway that one less thing might be okay. But if you travel, it, it might be just a good thing to have. We encourage it for sure. Okay, good answers, everyone. These polls are just uh, just for fun. We're not recording the, or we're not scoring, what I should say. We don't, we don't do that. All right. We have earned a break. We're half hour into class. Time for a break. Go get some coffee, stretch. We'll see you back here at 9.33. So three minutes, 9.33.
Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I'm Matt Oborn, your travel and entertainment card specialist. Um, in the next section um, of our training, we're going to go over the process for creating a travel request and concur. Um, we're also going to look at travel and entertainment card requests as well. Um, so uh, first, just kind of little housekeeping. It's important to know uh, that Concur is the only system that we'll be using to pre-authorize travel or su to submit um, travel and entertainment card actions like requesting new um, travel and like uh, requesting a new travel and entertainment card. Um, and then as a, as a reminder, um, just like in my travel um, previously, travel requests are required in order to authorize business purpose and funding source. Um, and these need to be done in advance of travel. Um, or purchases for that travel. Um, so let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at how to um, pre-authorize travel and concur. Uh, so to create a travel request, um, this, this is uh, the screen that you'll be looking at. Um, the request is the trip pre-authorization and policy requires that all UCSD business travel is pre-authorized um, and, and is done in advance of the travel. Um, after selecting the request tab at the top of the screen and selecting new request, um, you'll see the request header tab. Um, general rule of thumb is you're only required to fill in the fields outlined in red um, it, with the exception of the fund portion that should also be filled in as well. Um, and then you're going to include the trip details. Um, as a as a quick reminder, you're you're creating the request on behalf of another if if you are creating the request as on behalf of another employee, um, please make sure that you're acting as their delegate before you get started. Otherwise, this trip will end up being authorized for yourself. So depending on the destination, uh, maybe you want to go somewhere nice, then uh, you could make that mistake, I guess. Um, so once you, uh, once you select the request type from the first drop down menu, um, the required information will change based on the specific type of request that you're making. Um, when you create um, your trip name, please note the trip name is reflected in the ledger. So we recommend using a naming convention that your department um, prefers or requires. Um, in addition, both domestic and foreign trips use the same travel request form. Um, and also, export controls are part of um, that process, that workflow. Um, when creating requests and expense reports in Concur, you'll be required to enter certain segments of your COA or chart of accounts. Um, without these segments, the request or expense cannot be submitted and it will, it will fail. Um, Required elements include fund, financial unit, approver, and function. And if you have set up your default expense information and concur, um, then these should show up when you open the search. Otherwise, you can search by text or code if you if they don't show up automatically. Um, we will discuss chart of accounts elements in an upcoming slide, but here I just wanted to provide some information about the approver. Um, the approver is required for all requests. In Concur, the person submitting or creating the request determines which of the um, available financial unit approvers to send the document to. They must select the uh, specific approver. And you might notice that in Oracle, it works a little, little bit differently. Um, in Oracle, you can, it, it can choose between different approvers. Uh, but this one, you'll, you'll have to specify the um, specific approver that you're routing your um, request to. So now that we kind of had a general overview of the, the request portion, let's take a look at the expense entry form portion of your request. This is, this is where we go to sort of get an idea of the uh, expenses that you're going to incur on, on the trip. So on a travel request, the expenses tab allows us to estimate the cost of the different components of our trip. In my travel, we would estimate the entire cost of the trip in a lump sum. So um, in Concur, we're able to sort of look at each component and get um, a more clear financial picture of the, the cost of the trip. Um, you don't need to complete every single field. Uh, sometimes you just won't know the cost for, for a specific component of the trip. 
um, but you just give your best estimate on there. Um, fill in the information to the best of your abilities with the department guidelines in mind. Um, you can add as many expense types as you need, but just please keep in mind that every request needs to have at least one expense type entry. Having complete information in the request stage means that the reconciliation uh, stage will be a little bit smoother for you. And I know that this is a lot of information fairly quickly, um, but don't worry, uh, we're gonna be able to see a video of the entire request process um, in just a little bit. So once you have uh, filled out the uh, expense portion, uh, you're going to then submit the request. Uh, once you or your delegate complete and submit the request, you click the red submit request button at the top right of your screen. Uh, new request ID is then generated. In my travel, uh, this is what used to be known as a trip number, but now our request ID numbers are alphanumeric digits. Keep in mind that request IDs, once again, are required before making any kind of travel booking. Next, we're going to see a quick video on the end-to-end -end process. So in this video, we're going to tie all the components of a travel request process together. So first, we're going to be clicking on requests. In your request screen, you're going to click on new request. You're going to say that it is, you, you can choose here whether it's a travel or event. You're going to choose travel request. The, the name, which your, um, the naming um, should be, you keep your department's um, requirements in mind. Traveler type employee, trip type, we're going to in-state travel here. Um, the trip purpose, in this case, we're attending a meeting. And uh, the start date is, uh, you're gonna enter the start and end date for the trip. Will it include personal travel? No, uh, unless it does. Um, generally, you'll be putting no there. Uh, origin is going to be, you're going to be departing out of San Diego. Um, in this case, we're going to be traveling to San Francisco for this meeting. And then we're going to be entering in the fund, financial unit, approver, function, and if you have a, a project or task number, you would enter that in there as well. And then you, you type in a um, detailed um, business purpose. So I'm attending UC card meetings for this, for this um, request. And then we're gonna click save and then go over to the expense tab. Now oh, this, this um, sorry, this part is if, when we had the uh, required uh, form for essential travel, this is how you would attach that. Or if you needed to attach any other documents um, for this trip, you would you could attach them um, in in there. Um, so now we're going to the expenses um, area that we talked about. This is where you're going to estimate your expenses for the trip. Um, so you're, first, we're going to start with air travel. You're going to put the the departure date. And the, you could actually just use one section and do the entire round trip ticket um, for this estimate. Uh, you put the, the amount of the flight, $300. And then we're gonna go down to lodging. So we, we select lodging and we're gonna put the dates that our lodging begins and ends. Um, San Francisco, California. So a total of $400 for, uh, for two nights, which everybody that knows San Francisco probably knows that that's not really realistic, but um, we're we're gonna go with that. So 200, and now we're putting in the meals. So two days, uh, estimated total of all the meals, hundred dollars, and then it gives us our, our grand total at the bottom. So eight hundred dollars for the trip, and then we're just going to submit the request, and then this will go through the um, approval flow. So that's kind of a general overview uh, about how to uh, create a travel request. So let's take a look. Um, let's take a look at some key points uh, 
about travel requests. Um, one, a financial unit approver must be selected for all concur requests. Um, another, another thing to keep in mind when you are um, creating this request is be sure to choose UC San Diego values um, and not Office of the President values when selecting your chart string elements. Sometimes we see these um, with Office of the President um, values selected, and then that, that will cause the document to fail or, or not be able to be submitted. Um, also, uh, commitment. So commitments, uh, uh, commitment is the oracle term for liens, which are placed in the project portfolio management. Um, to manage commitments and ensure travel requests are associated, that you need to make sure that your requests are associated with a project. Um, in order to remove a commitment, a request must be closed. While closing and canceling a request will both successfully move, remove a, a request from your view, only closing the re request will remove the actual commitment. Okay, so now we're going to move along to um, the University Travel and Entertainment card. Um, and so it's um, it's some of these, the changes that we've had from, you know, we, we've uh, transitioned from um, travel and entertain or travel card over to travel and entertainment card. Um, and we are very excited about some of the um, features and processes for that the card um, now has. Um, so first, uh, we're, we'll kind of go over a little bit about um, the Travel and Entertainment Card program. So t &E cards are issued to employees, event hosts, or, uh, or coordinators who travel, entertain, or coordinate events for official university business. They're also um, issued to um, folks that uh, arrange um, moves for their department um, as well. The t &E card program is corporate build, which means all transactions are automatically paid by the university. Also, this means that there's um, the the transactions are all yeah they're all paid daily. Um, so once they come in, they're paid by the university, uh, and then they're posted into Concur. Um, previously, with travel cards, only airline transactions were automatically paid by UCSD in this manner. Um, but with the new card program, all transactions are automatically paid and posted and concur. All transactions should be reconciled within 45 days of the end of the trip or event. So even though they're paid automatically, you still need to do your part and uh, reconcile the transactions um, once, once they're in your concur uh, available expenses. The expenses that um, should be paid with Teeny card include expenses paid in advance of UCSD travel, such as flights, hotel deposits, conference registrations, as well as expenses while on travel, such things such as uh, baggage fees, lodging, um, food expenses, um, tax, Ubers, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so, let's let's take a look at some of the features of the new um, Teeny Card program. So, as we as we talked about, the card is corporate built, um, and they're they're paid automatically. There are expanded um, card limits um, from from what we previously had on the travel card. Um, so, and then there's also a little bit, um, there's also a few merchants that have been um, added as well, merchant controls. Um, we've been able to um, increase standard card limits to um, to kind of get in line with what, what people are needing on their trips. Um, UCSD t &E cards support uh, chip and magnetic stripe and online contactless transactions. So with contactless transactions, um, dynamic data is used for every transaction. This, is, this greatly increases security um, on, on the cards. Uh, contactless transactions are processed 10 times faster than chip transactions and are more uh, hygienic, which is really important right now. Um, and so in order to, to to use that, all you do is just kind of hover your card uh, about an inch, inch and a half away from the contactless reader um, at the merchant. And so a lot of merchants, as, as you've probably all um, seen in the last year or so, a lot of merchants are really adopting the contactless uh, readers. So that's a, that's a great thing to be able to have that uh, card that allows you to do that. 
Um, lastly, because the transactions post write to concur, um, it's, it's resulted in a much more streamlined um, travel and event reconciliation process. There's no longer the, the necessity to manage credit card statements from the bank. Um, you, don't, you don't need to worry about tracking down um, you know, those, those statements um, and figuring out what purchases went to what. They all show up in Concur, and you could look at um, you know, the purchases right there. Um, so how do, how, do we, um, how do we get a card? So creating a card request. So this is how um, this is this is the area where we create a, a new card request. This area we'll talk about a little bit. You can also um, request a limit increase. This, but the, this is where we would um, do it. So for a new card, um, you are going to use the drop the card um, the drop down request type, and you're going to select card and payment product request. Then on the payment product type dropdown over on the right, um, you're going to select UCSD travel and entertainment card. And what, as I mentioned before, on this dropdown, please be sure that you're selecting UCSD travel and entertainment card because there's also an option for UCOP travel and enter entertainment card. Um, so you want to make sure that you're selecting that. Um, you're going to complete all the required fields, the the same as as you did earlier with the request, the fund. Um, financial unit approver function, um, business purpose. So what what do you need the card for? Um, and then you're going to click on the expense tab. So in the expense tab, similar to the travel request, um, there. This is where you kind of provide the detail, right? So um, in the expenses tab, you can choose between applying for a new card, requesting a, a spending limit increase updating the name on the uh, or or address information or canceling a card. Um, so in this case, you're going to be selecting new card. And then for the new card request, the prospective cardholder must sign and attach a cardholder agreement. Uh, and then they must be the one to actually submit the new card request in concur. Um, the cardholder agreement outlines usage guidelines for the teeny card and requires a signature of the cardholder as well as the financial unit approver. Um, and that ensures understanding of the card's corporate build and all transactions must be reconciled within 45 days. Once the um, employee has submitted the request for a new card, the workflow to obtain the required approvals begins. The approvals for a new card include that of the cardholder, supervisor, and financial unit approver. When the request hits the travel team queue, um, Essentially, um, from that point, it takes about two weeks for a card to arrive at the employee's mail code. Um, and then just a reminder that all corporate build cards, it's a requirement that we use a campus mail code as the mailing or delivery address. Um, currently, in, this, in the current state, um, a lot of, with a lot of people work, just kind of a note about this, um, with a lot of people working remotely, people have asked to have their card uh, mail to their home address or an alternate address where they can have the card, uh, get the card directly. Um, this is this is fine. Um, just we just have to. Um, I just want to be clear that the the billing address still needs to be a UCSD address, but we can do kind of a one-time um, mail change to a to an alternate address. But we don't want you to to put that information into Concur. Um, we would rather have you, uh, or it's required to create a service and support ticket um, saying that you that you have a, a card request in Concur and that you'd like it mailed, uh, that you'd like your card mailed to an alternate address. Um, we just don't want to have personally identifiable information in Concur, um, such as a, a home address. Um, so one other another an important point that these general instructions that we've provided assume that the um, applicant is the user submitting the request however if you want to have another employee act as a delegate um, they can do so and they can create the request um, on your behalf but they cannot press submit request so you would have to then once they get it to the point of submitting you would have to then log in and actually be the one to click um, submit so that, so that it can be submitted 
basically an acceptance. Um, and so, um, yes, so now, well, and while a delegate can't submit the request for a new card um, in for these um, requests, they can submit for on a card holder's behalf for other card actions, such as limit increases or cancellations. Um, those can be submitted by the delegate. Um, so, so that's something to keep in mind. And then one more, um, actually, I'm sorry, I already mentioned that we don't want the personally identifiable information um, added into the concur. So please reach out with a service and support ticket for mailing to an alternate address. Um, okay, so let's take a look at it. You know, we, we mentioned that there are other um, types of requests in this, in this area. Um, so let's look at another type of request. We're going to look at providing um, request details. So uh, for a card action, different, a different type of uh, card action here. So we're going to, here we're going to have a card holder who requires a limit increase on their card. Um, for a limit increase, a justification must be provided. The justification should be specific um, and should say something such as, the increase is needed to uh, process a moving company invoice. Um, so for moving company invoices, if you if you needed a, a limit increase or you uh, you would just note that we need a limit increase to $10,000 for a specific amount of time, um, that way we can process this invoice that we have. Um, the action requests can be used for limit increases, name changes, closed closures or cancels, um, and and once again, um, you always want to be sure that you're keeping in mind that UCLP uses this as well. Um, so there might be some actions that are that are on um, that are listed there that are not used by UCSD. So you just aren't going to be using those. One of those is a declining balance reload. We don't have that on with with our card product requests. Um, you might notice also that you don't have the option and concur to have a merchant code restriction lifted. Um, so if you did need to pay a moving in invoice, that moving company gen isn't automatically um, allowed on the card because of the merchant code. So you would, you would if you needed um, that limit increase, you would just kind of note that on, um, on the request. Otherwise, if you just purely need a merchant code uh, to be lifted, um, you can create a service and support ticket saying, uh, that you need a merchant code lifted um, for a purchase, whether it's a conference registration that you're trying to pay for that's not going through on the card um, or something of that nature. And that would be done through service and support. Uh, the approval workflow for a teeny card action is the same as for an application, except once again, that a delegate may submit the card action requests for a limit increase or, or those other um, types. So let's look at, um, let's go ahead and look at some of the key points about our card requests. Um, in, so first for new card requests, um, in addition to the cardholder signature, financial unit approver, a signature must be included on the completed cardholder agreement. And this form must be attached to the new card request. I have um, received a decent number of, of um, these forms that aren't signed or they're, they're signed by, the applicant or they're signed by, uh, or, and, or they're, and they're not signed by the financial unit approver. And then we have to return those and it sort of delays the process. So just be sure that that form is signed. Um, be, because teeny cards are corporate billed, um, they must have a UCSD billing address. So that's another important point. When you're applying for the card and you, you have your address information in there, it, we need to have it to a, billing, a UCSD billing address. And then lastly, once again, I, I know I've said it a few times, but the personally identifiable, identifiable information we, we do not want in, um, in Concur. So if you need the alternate address, you do that through service and support. Um, another um, important point um, is that a, con um, a Concur travel request must be completed before booking university travel. Um, Concur is the official method for booking university travel. And then finally, the travel and entertainment card is the preferred method of payment for employee travel. Um, on this 
on this list here, it include it says that essential travel form that was just lifted uh, two weeks ago. Um, it is still required if your travel um, occurred between October 21st through April 8th. So if you're kind of doing um, a reconciliation um, sort of after the fact, then you would still need to attach that form. Uh, but from April 8th on, you do not do not need to um, add the form. Um, so we're we've kind of made it through um, about half of our class already. So we're going to go ahead and take a five minute break now, and we will see you back here. Let's say 9:04. Uh, I'm sorry, 10:04, and we will see you in a bit.
Hello and welcome back from break. Okay, we're a little bit more than halfway done with our class. I see some good questions in the chat. We'll be able to um, answer those during the Q&A period. And here we go with my favorite part. Well, I already said TripIt Pro was my favorite part, but this is my other favorite part. Okay, we're gonna book travel. UC San Diego has been using the Concur Travel booking platform since 2008. So if you've ever booked with what used to be called Connexus and you've used Balboa Travel, you already know about Concur Travel. We've been using it since 2008. Super, super exciting stuff that we're still using it. Um, booking travel in Concur means that you have access to all of the university's negotiated rates and benefits with our partner travel suppliers. Concur is the only official booking method for all university business travel. Um, we did have a requirement due to COVID that booking in Concur was mandatory. As Matt said earlier, that holds true for trips between October 21st of last year and April 8th of this year. Although we are no longer mandating use of Concur, um, Concur is the official business place to, uh, it's the official business source for travel. Okay, so it's the only acceptable way that we have to manage unused ticket credits, book within travel policy, and assure that your travelers are all safe and accounted for in case of emergency. Because of the COVID situation, there's currently a total of $35 billion worth of unused tickets globally. Travelers who booked within a contract such as our own airline contracts are provided levels of financial recourse and ticket credits that the public does not have access to. The only way you as a department can assure your fiscal responsibility and manage your unused travel spend is if you book within our program. There is zero visibility to travel spend if your travelers go rogue and book it in another source. From a risk management standpoint, straight from our Office of Risk Management here on campus and from UCOP, the only way to assure travelers' safety is to book through our official channels. Concur, once again, is the official booking source for UC San Diego travel. All right, so the serious business stuff pushed aside. Let's look once again at my own Concur homepage. You can launch your trip search straight from here, or you can click on the travel module at the top of the screen in that black bar. It may also help you to know that Balboa Travel is still our partner travel agency. Balboa has been working with UC San Diego travelers for almost 50 years, five zero years, and they understand our mission, our travelers, and our travel policies. Concur requires a travel agency to actually issue the ticket or reservation on the back end. So although you're interacting with a Concur booking platform, you're still using Balboa Travel. Itineraries and booking confirmations will come from Balboa. And if you need assistance with the travel booking, you can still call, you can still call Balboa directly. We're gonna pop over to Concur's help resource to watch their video on booking travel. This is an example of the type of help you'll get directly from Concur. You'll notice that some of the features in the video are not being used here at UC San Diego. So for example, we are not forwarding your flight selections to a manager for approval. Could you imagine 42,000 business travelers a year all sending their flight selections to managers for approval? Holy cow, we're not gonna do that. We trust our travelers. So even with that disclaimer that there are some differences in this help video that we're about to see from how we do things here, the booking process remains core to how Concur operates and we can expect the same basic process here on our campus. All right, so we're gonna watch a quick video on booking travel. Booking a flight. SAP Concur makes it easy to book flights for an upcoming trip. From the SAP Concur homepage, simply enter your search criteria, such as type of trip, departure city and date, and return city and date. You can also specify whether you need a car and or hotel for your trip. Once you've completed the search details, click search.
you will see a list of available flights on the Depart tab. To filter the results, select a column row or cell in the airline grid at the top of the results page, or you can use the sliding scales on the left. Scroll down to view more results. To select your departure flight, click Select. Uh, stability issues today, so bear with us. We'll get this going. Select your return flight, click Select. The Shop by Fares tab displays your selected flight options. You can use the Shop by Schedule tab to view results by flight times. Click View Fares. The Fare Options display. The green checkmark icon indicates that the selected option is within policy. The yellow caution icon indicates a violation of a rule. A red exclamation point icon indicates a serious violation and cannot be booked. With the yellow caution icon, you can complete the booking, but SAP Concur sends your manager an email including the out-of-policy reason you chose, as well as lower-priced options that are available. To view additional flight details, click Flight Details. If you want to view the available seating for the flight, click View Seats to open a pop-up window that displays the seating configuration. Depending on the airline, you can select your desired seat for the flight. Review the fare options. When you are ready to select your flight, click the fare amount. In the Review and Reserve Flight section, you can review your flight itinerary. You can view the seat map, review the price summary information, and select your payment method. After you review the fare rules and restrictions, click Reserve Flight and Continue. You will see your complete travel itinerary. From this page, you can also choose to add a car, hotel, Wi-Fi, or rail, depending on location, to your itinerary. If you selected the options to book a car and or hotel on the initial search page, you will be prompted to select a car or hotel for your trip before you see the travel details. To continue with a reservation, click Next. A pop-up window notifies you that your trip does not have any car or hotel reservations. For this example, click OK. On the trip booking information page, notice that the trip name is based on the departure and arrival cities. You can edit the trip name as needed. You can also provide a trip description and enter who you would like to send a copy of the confirmation to. You are required to enter the reason you did not book a car with your flight. Enter the appropriate reason. To continue with the reservation, click Next. To complete the reservation, review your trip itinerary. To finalize your reservation process, click Confirm Booking. Note that if your company does not require approvals for this trip, you will see a Purchase Ticket button instead of Confirm Booking. By confirming the booking, you are sending it to your manager for approval. Click Confirm Booking. The Pre-Populating Your Expense Report page appears. You can select transportation options for arrival and departure from the airports during your trip. For this example, select Taxi. The departure transportation defaults to the arrival selection. Click Finish. Depending on your company's travel and request configuration, you return to the travel page and can view your upcoming trips. If you need to submit a request prior to travel, you will continue to the request header screen to complete the required request. Thank you. This concludes the training video. Okay, so once again, remember that this video is a generic video straight from Concur. You can find it from your Concur homepage above the profile button. There is a help option. Help in Concur is where Concur loads their own um, help products, their videos, their walkthroughs, their guides, that sort of thing. So it's a great option if you're looking for a non UC San Diego specific information. As a reminder, we are not sending flight selections to managers. We trust our people. 
And we are also, we don't care if you're not going to rent a rental car with your flight. That's that's your business, not ours. So again, some of those options we saw in the video don't pertain to us here. Okay, one feature that wasn't addressed in the video is the option for TripIt privacy. This is how you're gonna indicate if it's a personal trip or not. If you're booking a business trip, the reservations and receipts are going to pop on over to Concur and TripIt. If you're booking a super fun, exotic personal vacation, the trip details are gonna be kept separate. So you'll see this option at the end of when you're booking a trip in Concur. Right, so we're gonna take a brief look at how expenses show up in Concur. Um, most of the content for the expense, for, the expense portion is covered in this afternoon's class, the reporting expenses class. We're just going to take a quick dip into it so that you can understand and see how a booking works in conjunction with Concur Expense. This is what we mean when we say that Concur bookings were going to flow through. We're looking at a traveler's actual available expenses. These all represent travel bookings made straight in Concur. You're going to notice that there's a highlighted line for enterprise that says estimated under the amount. The reservation was made correctly, uh, but rental cars do not charge a card at the time of the booking. So seeing the line here means that Concur is just showing you that a reservation for a rental car was made. It's showing the reservation itself. When the actual charge for the rental car shows up in this list of available expenses, you can simply click both the car rental line as checked here and the actual charge line, and then you can combine those expenses. Or alternately, what a lot of people like to do to keep their queue a little cleaner is they simply delete that estimated line. Just delete it. It's not an actual expense, it's just a placeholder. If the reservation is for personal travel, absolutely no problem. You are going to see personal travel information in Concur expenses when you book with Concur or with Balboa. Um, that's very common. Don't worry about it. You can just delete that line. Just delete it. The only time you can't delete a line is if one of our UC San Diego card products is used for the charge. So reservations can always be deleted. Actual charges to one of our cards cannot. To be clear, deleting a line here doesn't cancel or change the reservation. It's just the indicator that an expense happened or will happen. It's kind of a lot to get used to. We're not used to seeing things in this way, but um, the more we get out there and travel, now that travel is opening up again, the more comfortable we're all gonna be with it. Now let's take a look at how to add charges to your expense reports. Again, this is just a quick view and the details are gonna be covered in this afternoon's class. So once again, we're on my own homepage and you can see I have eight available expenses. I click into the available expenses to see the full list. This pop-up still comes up for everybody. Here you can see my expenses. I'm gonna click the particular line items that I want to put onto an expense report. I'm gonna move those to an expense report I already had set up. That's all there is to it. Just click and move. Ignore those alerts, those are there because this is um, a test environment for me. You're not gonna have 13 alerts on your own, I'm pretty sure. You can see that um, I have put those transactions onto an expense report and I still have some remaining. So I'm gonna click the boxes for these four remaining airfares. I'm gonna start a new report. I don't have an expense report ready for these, so I'm gonna start one from here. Once I select new report, it takes me to the header where I can fill out all the trip information. Pretty cool, pretty easy. Fantastic. So booking for a guest um, is just a little bit different than booking for yourself. 30 to 40% of all of our travel here on campus is guest or non-employee travel. Guest travel bookings are also made in Concur. 
The only difference is that when you go to Concur Travel, that, that module, you need to switch over to book for a guest. So the quick video on your screen here, there you go, book for a guest. You can see that it's booking for a guest because a little red person icon is under book for a guest. You can flip it back to book for myself. Book for a guest, book for myself. Piece of cake. Easy peasy, right? Okay, it's been a little bit of an adjustment for us to see a guest traveler's airfare or hotel reservation in our own Concur profile. The system is working correctly. Um, since Concur is for employees only, Anything you book on behalf of a guest traveler ends up in your profile to process and reconcile. It's again, a little bit of a change, but we're all getting used to it. See how easy that was? Guest travelers get the same benefits as employees do. They get the same discounts and perks of a UC booking. Um, and you wanna know a secret? This booking for a guest is how you would book travel for your family members too. So if you want to fly your daughter home for Christmas or your spouse out to meet you at a conference, this is how you would book that travel. So I keep talking about benefits. This is where we see the true value of our managed travel program. Airlines want our business, especially now during COVID. So they've stepped up by offering us a variety of other perks in addition to dollar discounts. These include priority boarding, free upgrades when available, and priority standby. We have a real life example of how our contracts benefit our travelers. If you remember a few months ago, there was that horrendous freezing storm that went through Texas. It shut down airports. People were freezing in their homes. People were stuck. There, no travel could happen. Roads were closed. Everything was closed. Can you imagine how badly our traveler wanted to come home from that situation? Who wants to be stuck in a freezing storm in Texas when they have San Diego to come home to? So with the airports closed and multiple, multiple flights being canceled, when the airport finally did reopen, how did they decide who got to get on those first planes home? How did they decide of the thousands of travelers ready to come home, who got to fly out? Well, the hint is, it was us. It was us because we have contracts with airlines that put us on those planes first. We get to come home first. So even the travelers with high status on airlines didn't get that level of benefit. Um, with United in particular, our contract is so robust that the only other company in the world that has the level of benefits we do is Facebook. It's just us and Facebook. So if you can imagine how exclusive that is, we are part of that exclusive club that gets all these top-notch benefits and privileges that other travelers aren't gonna get. Having priority standby with airlines means that our UC travelers get on the plane first and we get to come home and leave freezing Texas and come back to sunny San Diego. This slide shows a variety of other benefits we have with our airline partners. Every airline is a little different. Every airline offers us a different, um, oh, a different range of options, I would say, for how our travelers are going to be treated. Every single airline does give us a discount. In many cases, the higher the original ticket cost, the bigger the discount. Since we travel on um, economy fares, our financial discounts typically aren't massive. Financially, we might save between one and 10% on the ticket, but the additional benefits that come with our contracts is where the true value of the program comes into play. Okay, so. Most of us are familiar with making a travel booking because we've been using Concur since 2008, um, but are you comfortable with making changes to your existing itineraries? We're gonna to refer to Concur just once again to see the best way to change, update, or cancel your booking. Remember that this functionality is core to Concur. It is core to all of its users. It's 39,000 companies across the world. Um, so this is how Concur is actually built. You're gonna notice some minor differences with Concur and how it looks on the video compared to our own version of Concur, but it operates all the same way in the background. So let's take a look at the quick last video of the class.
Changing a purchased and ticketed trip. In Concur Travel, you can make changes to a purchased and ticketed trip. Note, certain scenarios might be influenced by third or fourth party participants. In some cases, you must contact the vendor or provider directly to change a purchased and ticketed trip. To change an existing trip from the travel page on the upcoming trips tab, click the trip to open it. You can change or cancel a ticketed trip from your itinerary. To cancel the entire trip, click Cancel All Air. To change your flight reservations, click Change. In the Change Flight window, you can change either segment of your flight. In this example, you will see how to change your departure date. Select the day and time of your flight change. Concur Travel will automatically adjust any car or hotel reservations to match the days of the flight change. To begin searching for new flights, click Search. On the Shop by Fares tab, click View Fares to view additional flight options. Select the Fare button for the option you want to purchase. After you make the changes, you will see the original airfare, new airfare, airfare difference, exchange fee, and the total cost of the exchange. If the exchange costs more than purchasing a new ticket, Concur Travel displays a pop-up window that shows the cost of the exchange and the new ticket. To cancel the exchange, click Cancel Flight Exchange. To finalize your change, click Purchase New Flights. Thank you. This concludes the training video. Piece of cake, right? So I was I was just reminded um, that we do have extensive knowledge base articles or KBAs in our services and support portal that go over almost all of this information. So if a video froze on you or if you didn't quite catch something, um, again, we have KBAs. We will be sending you all of this information after the class. You'll get the presentation. Um, you will get links to our KBAs. You'll get all sorts of resources to help you. So if you didn't catch something in this class this time around, don't worry. We've got you covered in lots of ways. All right. So now it is time to access your course workbook and take a few minutes to complete the Concur Travel and Request quiz. Um, submit your answers. And we're going to go over the answers together. Jeannie just dropped the information into the chat if you didn't have it already. We're going to give you 10 minutes for the quiz and the break. So um, go ahead, take your quiz, leave your answers up on your screen so we can go over them together. And we're going to be back here at 1037. So 1037. Good luck on the quiz. As a quick reminder, sorry to interrupt, but the quiz is how we track attendance for UC Learning. So be sure you fill it out. Even if you don't get the questions right, we're not grading you. Just make sure that you're participating. Thanks.
All right, everybody. Thanks for raising your hands. Thanks for taking those quizzes. Again, it's just to um, report back to UC Learning that we did actually have live bodies in our class. We're not scoring you. Let's go over those results together. Okay, here we go. True or false? Use of the concurrent travel module is required for all UC travel bookings. True. Concur is the only official source for booking business travel. True or false? The primary assistant only receives email copies of the travel arrangements that they booked. That is false. The primary assistant receives emails for all travel arrangements, regardless of who booked the trip. TripIt offers what? It offers all sorts of things. It's itinerary management, free access to the pro version, lots of things. Where do I go to download TripIt Pro? That is, of course, the Concur App Center. To pre-authorize my trip, I will create a blank in Concur. You're gonna create a request, travel request, new request, any variant of that is fine as long as you have that R word in there, the R word being request. True or false, users need to enter the POET POTAF information on the request in order for there to be a commitment, which is the Oracle term for a lien. That's true. When submitting a travel and entertainment or t &E card request, which payment product type should be selected? That one is UCSD travel and entertainment card. Do not select UCOP. We are not Office of the President. True or false? A request in Concur must be submitted each time a change needs to be made to a cardholder's t and &E card. That is true. Think of a request as a way to request an action. When should you reconcile your t &E card transactions? That is no more than 45 days after the trip ends or after the event occurs. So get those reconciliations in there as soon as you can. True or false? When I book travel for a guest, their airfare purchase or hotel reservation will show up in my available expenses. That's true. That's a change for us, but we're all getting the hang of it. Good job, everybody. Again, we're not grading you. We just need to make sure that you're participating as a live person in the class. So thanks for filling out those quizzes. All right, we're gonna move into our Q&A portion. There were some really great meaty questions in the chat. Um, Matt and I will work together to get your questions answered. And um, if you have anything else to add or if something triggers a question in your mind, go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll get to it. Okay, so I've received the message, error communicating with TripIt in his suggestions. I am guessing that's just a connectivity issue. Um, remember that Concur and TripIt aren't owned by UC San Diego. We have no control over how those applications are working. So I would suggest um, going to that app center trying to get to trip it again and see what happens. If it's giving you that same error, um, I would just suggest maybe keep trying. I know I know that's a vague answer, but we don't own or control. We haven't designed these things. They're, they're sort of out of our hands. So hopefully that'll be back up and running soon. Okay, next question. Can guests book their own travel? Um, this one is a multi-part question, so I'll take them one at a time. Guests can book their own travel only by calling Balboa. So there's no way for a guest or non-employee to get into Concur. Concur is for employees only. So the second part of the question was to clarify, the guest no longer needs to register using their SSN and address. That's for Payment Compass. So um, yes, guest travelers, if they have anything that will be reimbursed to them, do need to register via Payment Compass to get into the Concur her system to be reimbursed. But to book their travel, they can call Balboa directly. And this part's a bit of a change. What they need to have, they need to be able to give Balboa the approved request ID number, which Matt went over during his request portion, and 
in addition to their concur request, they need to be able to provide their host person's UCSD email address. So that's just as a fraud prevention stop. So they need to be able to have the request ID and their host's UCSD email address. I hope that answered your question, Deborah. And if it didn't, just let us know. Okay, so next question is, what if I'm booking a personal trip for myself and my spouse? Great question. Of course, we wanna travel with our families. We wanna travel more than one person at a time, right? So Concur is built for business travel. It's built for the business traveler, which is one person going on a business trip. It is not great for booking more than one person at a time. And there are ways to do it. You can book one ticket at a time, or I find it much easier since you're booking a personal trip and you're using a personal form of payment, just call Balboa, just call them, have them book two tickets at once, piece of cake. Calling Balboa gets you all the same benefits and discounts as, as a UC business traveler would. Your spouse gets the same benefits and discounts. Um, that's the easiest way. Again, you could book one, one ticket at a time. I've done that before. But you have to make sure that you're booking right after each other so that you can be sure there are two seats on the plane. All right. Are we able to go over booking certification training requests? Kevin, um, we need a bit more information on that. If you want to unmute and let us know what you mean about booking certification or training requests. Yeah. Um a few of my coworkers, we uh, need to certify for our on-base document management system um, with a third-party vendor. Um, do we put that in here somewhere for training expenses? Um, as far as we're concerned, I think that's just regular travel, so I'm not sure... It there, hi, this is Liz. There's no travel component to it. It's just, oh. we have to, it's a virtual course. Gotcha. And yep. so I, I think Thanks, we just have to, no worries. I think we just have to put it in as the expense for the class in order for it to go through the accounting process. So that's how it used to be. I don't know if it's changed. So there's no like, there's, there, there'll be no, no airfare or hotel mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's literally just the cost mm -hmm. for the virtual course. Yeah. Um, Matt, do you know that one offhand? I feel like we had that in our Q and A's somewhere. Yeah, if it's just, so if it's just, um, if it's just for the course itself and there's no travel involved, um, then it, it can, if the, if you have a procurement card, it could go to that, or it can go to a travel and entertainment card um, as well. We don't, we're not given either one of those. That's why okay. I know when I had to book this in the past, they told me I had to book it through Concur so that it would go to the person in our department who has the, the procurement card and the travel card. So then they would pay for it out of that, but it had to go through this for it to go through the proper channels. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not, um, unfortunately not really sure exactly that, uh, that process. So, uh, maybe we would have to, uh, get back to you about, about that. Okay. I can, we'll follow up with the administrative person in our department Yeah. and maybe they yeah. can tell us. Okay, great. Thank you. I, I would also say definitely get those cards. We're willing to go to bat for you with your management if they don't want to issue cards because we <laughs> yeah i think really, it's, really... It, it's relatively infrequent it's not something that we do can, yeah. you know all the time so yeah. i don't don't we'll, we'll take it up with our managers yeah thanks we're here to back you up if you need it okay thank you okay so we'll get back to that one um is the essential travel approval form still required for international travel so that essential travel approval form was only needed during a very specific time frame that was set by the chancellor's office. That time frame is between October 21st and April 8th. So if your travel happened before October 21st or after April 8th, you do not need that form. The form is only needed from October 21st to April 8th. I know the, the policy on that um, changed around quite a lot and um, that was all up to the chancellor's discretion based on the scientific um, findings related to COVID and travel. So we're past that now, we hope. We hope we don't have to require that ever again. <laughs> but for now, 
trips after April 8th do not need that form. Okay. Um, so then uh, we have a couple other questions as well. Um, do we, so uh, Lay asked, uh, do we need to allocate the expense at the new card request? Um, so no, uh, you don't need to allocate the expense um, for a new card um, request. When you're creating the card request, the expense tab um, is just where you select new card and then you're gonna indicate that the card is UCSD travel with the little uh, drop down. Um, UCSC travel and entertainment card and then you're going to add the mail code um, for the billing address on the account and then finally uh, just a comment um, below um, the next question that we had was from Sarah um, what if they um, what if they only need to travel once or twice per year should we should we request a t and &E card for them um, should you request a teeny card for faculty that only need to travel once or twice per year, or is this for frequent uh, travel? So this, the, the amount of travel uh, does not matter. Um, a traveler can apply for a teeny card no matter if they travel once per year or once per week. Um, the reason, the, you know, the biggest uh, benefits is that, it, uh, is that it just reduces the out-of-pocket expenses for the traveler. Um, it makes it a lot easier to reconcile the transactions that are on the TNE card, um, and it makes sure that the uh, traveler or the cardholder is getting reimbursed for everything. And if they travel and they misplace a receipt or don't, you know, don't know what they paid for something, um, you know, if they paid cash or something, then then they're not going to be able to get fully reimbursed. So um, it it can be for anybody that um, that travels. Well, I, I'm sorry, I have a, a follow up to that. Um, mm -hmm. So if your faculty is requesting uh, you as your admin um, to get a T&E card for them and your um, department says that they don't want to, uh, what should we do then? Well, I mean, ultimately, your department's going to be the one that approves the request. So, I mean, you're unfortunately, I mean, you're going to have to go through them to, to make sure that they get the card or that they allow the card. Um, but uh, you know, you can explain. You know, we can, you can explain that um, that it's allowed that it is al allowed for for them, regardless if they travel once per year or or not. Um, and uh, you know, just kind of go from there. So I'm not really, you know, we don't we're not requiring. Um, we do strongly encourage that the travel and entertainment card is used. Okay. What I would add what I would add to that is that. Concur was built to work with card products like this. It was not built to work with personal cards. So using a T&E card or a P card, um, that's gonna make everything so much smoother and easier. We've had to do a lot of um, programming and customization to even make it work to give personal reimbursements. It's just not built for that. So the more people that have cards, the easier the whole process is gonna be for everybody. And on top of that, um, from the card perspective, it used to be that cards were a personal liability. So they were in, you know, a, a person was responsible for repaying the balance or managing that. That's not the case anymore. So that was the barrier that most departments had was that they didn't want that personal liability. But now that it's corporate build, that's just, it's simply not the case. Um, there aren't late notices anymore. All of the things that people didn't like about the last card product have changed. It, it's a lot easier now. So again, we really, really strongly encourage all travelers to have a T&E card, even if they travel once every 18 months. We really think it, it's worth it. Um, and again, if your department wants to come and talk to us about it, we're happy to do that. Thank you. Yeah. OK, uh, this and we also have another question. So. Um, would this also be used for move relocation from out of state to San Diego? Um, and would that be considered uh, personal travel? So yes, uh, travel requests. Oh, this is um, Curtis Culbertson's question. So, um, so yes, uh, travel requests or trip preauthorizations are required for uh, move relocation for new employees. There's specific, um, a, there's a specific trip type and trip purpose to select for that um, in, inside the request. Um, and it is not 
considered personal travel. Um, sometimes travelers might have added a couple personal days to that move process. So if that is the case, then that would need to be accounted for um, to, sure that, to ensure that expenses are excluded for reimbursement for those personal days. But overall, it's not considered personal travel. Um, next, Kelsey has one more question, it looks like. I have two more. Oh, yeah. two more. Um, so one is, can I guess, can I guess, sorry, having trouble reading today. Can I book a guest through Balboa with the request number and not need to register Payment Compass if they're only having flight and hotel paid for? Yes, absolutely. If the guest traveler will have no reimbursements coming back to them, no payments going to the guest, and UCSD is paying for um, the hotel, the local hotel and the airfare up front, then there's no reason to register that guest in Payment Compass. Um, those expenses will show up on the host person or the delegate travel arranger on their profile to do the reconciliation that way. Okay, so next question is, is the t &E card required in order to get the enhanced travel benefits like travel insurance, priority boarding, or standby? No, it's not. So you, in order to get those enhanced benefits, you have to book and concur. So concur is the booking platform. The t &E card is the payment method. The booking platform concur, we have a card in there for everybody to use that um, handles airfare. So airfare for employees, airfare for guests, that sort of thing. So that's already built into concur. There is no need to have a t &E card for airfare in those cases. The t &E card is gonna be used for when you book a rental car or a hotel. So the card is your payment method, concur is the booking platform. I hope that helps. And let's go back to Matt for the next one. Yeah, so the next question that came in was, uh, if the t &E card isn't used frequently, would the card be automatically canceled or at risk of being canceled for inactivity? Um, if it's used once and then not again until two years later. Um, for for, thing, for um, cards that aren't used for two years, um, the bank does take a look at those. And if there's no use whatsoever, uh, then, then they could put that into a um, temporarily closed status um, until you you come back and actually need the card, and we could reactivate the card. Um, but um, yeah, they're not going to just completely get canceled. Um, so that one, that question was from Josephine. Um, I think it's see. back to me. Oh, okay. If a traveler doesn't expense their trip in time within 45 days, who is responsible? The traveler is. So Concur sends a lot of notifications. Concur sends notifications just like our old system does, reminding people to get those trips expensed, get those expense reports submitted. So those start to go out um, to the point that the traveler is going to um, receive them frequently, daily, until they take action and get that trip reconciled. Um, there's a second part. If personal liability or late notices are no longer given to the traveler, and that's just for the, the t and &E card itself. So once again, because card transactions flow into Concur, we've already paid for it. The university has paid for those purchases. What Concur does is it shows you the expenses and shows the traveler or the cardholder, what needs to be paid back to the university. So in other words, our central account pays for the purchases. And then when you reconcile the trip, your department is charged to pay us back for those charges. So 45 days is a long time after a trip. We hope that everyone gets their expenses claimed by then. We know that doesn't always happen. And so our travel operations team will help work with your departments to get everything submitted in a timely fashion. Okay, my next question is, we just have a few minutes remaining. So um, we're gonna go through these as quickly as we can. Has the hotel prepayment expanded beyond local hotels? Oh, Beatrice, I wish it has, I wish it has. So there's a very long story about why we can only pay for local hotels. I don't have time to go into it now. Basically the Reader's Digest short version is that there is no card product payment method on the market that will do hotels. There isn't one. There is a credit card for airfare. That's easy. There is no card for hotels that will go uh, nationwide. 
So we've had to really, really work the system and um, get a little tricky and creative to enable our local hotels to accept the card payment product um, that we've set up. So we are desperately working with US Bank. They have a brand new card product that we hope to release in the next few months that may work for this. But for now, um, the only way to prepay a local hotel is in concur with our card. And the only way to pay for a hotel outside of San Diego is a T&E card or personal form of payment. That's all we have right now, but we're working on it. Okay, so I think we've done all the questions. Let me check the chat. Don't see anything else. Everyone, we did it. We did it. We had two minutes left. We got through the class and the questions. That is fantastic. If you have follow-up questions or want to know more, join us in office hours. We offer office hours twice a week. We answer questions live. You can share your screens. We can interact with you. Um, we have a lot of Concur help and resources. We have WalkMe, which pops up on your Concur home screen to help you. We have services and support. We have, um, as I said, office hours, which we love. We have these training opportunities. We have knowledge base articles that will help give you step-by-steps. Blink content has just been updated, so that information on Blink should all be new and fresh and um, more updated than it has been before. We are ready to help you however we can. So thank you so much, Matt. I don't know if you want to say a final farewell, but I will say thank you for joining us on this lovely Thursday morning. Yeah, thank you. It was great to spend the morning with everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Very good. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you.